yes welcome back again so uh, i'll just give you a brief introduction to the hardware uh, you may be unaware of the hardware beagle board a uh, beagle board is just like nothing like uh, just like a small computer where we have an arm controller which is a cortex a8 and a dsp processor by ti that is 3035 okay so the major processing for example audio video you need to process a lot of this audio video files isn't it so how do you do who does that of course the cortex a8 can also do that because it's again a multi pipe processor but we need a special video to support hdmi video to uh, to support or s video we have the dsp processor over here so i'll show you basically what are all these things so you have the usb ports all these are usb ports you have the ethernet port you have the serial port all these are peripherals and all these peripherals are on the ios of the controller so uh, you must be aware of a microcontroller right so a8 is a mic arm microcontroller which is a 30 32 bit controller now basically this as i said you earlier uh, as i mentioned earlier that this is small computer so you can connect a keyboard a ps2 mouse or uh, sorry a usb mouse or a, a usb keyboard and you can connect a s2 a s video connector over here and connect it directly to your televisions also that is also one of the possibilities and you can connect keyboard and a mouse and then since this doesn't have a hard drive what acts as a hard drive over here the sdmmc card the sdmmc card which has two partitions in which one you have the os and the other is for user usable for user so if you write any applications what do you do you need to get all this application data from the user section or user sector to the os so you have to transfer the data back and forth so who does it os does it isn't it so os helps you to do these things correct so similar way in this board the hard disk is nothing but our sdmmc card right so and it has other peripherals also so if you see the serial port if you want to connect to your pc for that matter you can either connect it via the hdmi port because nowadays most of the laptops have hdmi port as well isn't it or you can connect it to the serial connector and when you use serial communication is there any program that you need to uh, run to see what is going on in the ser on serial communication some terminal you need isn't it so either earlier we used to call it hyper terminal or there are various free freely available terminal programs like serial serial port monitors or you can use minicom that we use in linux right on linux so you can use this to communicate to the controller isn't it so that's how we are going to see uh, i think uh, devesh is going to just brief you about how to start up what what we need to do how we need to install our os onto the sdmmc card and then how do we move forward so some basic steps is going to show you so you can get familiar with how to go about installing your os onto the sdmmc card moving ahead okay so here is a, a basically one card reader and uh, the linux box on like the laptop on which linux is running it has the micro sd card over here okay and uh, like <coughs> now i was talking earlier that if you plug in a device it is coming going to come as a new device right so now how do you how do you figure it out that which device has been attached the message is basically it gives you the any events which has happened in the kernel so kernel has a logging facility which logs into uh, some buffer and you display that buffer that contents of the buffer using d message okay so that is look this is a command so if you look at the end right so you see the direct access generic usb sd reader okay can you can you see here direct access 
this one. This whole line, right? It's there. So now what it is saying is that there is it is Linux operating system like kernel has identified that there is a <coughs> there is a USB card reader has been attached, right? Now now what we we are saying is that in the card reader, so this is one device which has been attached to the system. So there is a driver already running on this. It has detected that this is the USB card reader. Now we have plugged in another micro SD card over here. So if you look at like more uh, like down, so here you see that it is saying that it is a device. Here it is saying that this one SKG device has been added and now it is calling it as a SDD, right. You can see that, right. And like if you see that, if you want to see that how many disks are there, so there is a command f disk minus l. You know. So, you can see that that uh, so SDA. SDA has Win95, SDA is basically partition SDA1, SDA2, SD5, SDA8, that is not showing. Okay, so I will first boot it and then I will yeah, okay. just show that. Yeah, I just I will go through the meaning. Okay, I will show that what is the the card. Probably this card doesn't have the right partitions, so I will show it using this card. But let let's see first that how this card boots up, and uh, what is uh, like what what it looks like. So <coughs> this card has uh, in the slide we mentioned that there will be MLO file, then U boot, and then your U image. And then there is a root file system. Okay, so I'm resetting the card. Okay. So just watch carefully; it moves pretty fast. So this is the terminal. Basically, Minicom is a terminal, the serial <coughs> where you can monitor the serial, uh, what is going on the serial console. So. So, so you can you can see that. So, the Texas Instrument X loader is there. Okay. So, the loader which I was talking about. So, what binaries you have burned on the card? The binaries you have burned is MLO, U boot, and U image, right? But who is going to run this MLO? So, this is the X loader basically, which <coughs> load, which is basically flashed on NAND flash. On this board itself, okay. So this, and there is there is a driver for this card, okay. Anything which is attached to card, there need need to have a driver. So driver detects that oh there is a SD card uh, attached to this board. Driver will go and check into the first sector, and it will inform X loader that there is a MLO. X loader will start loading that, start executing that MLO, okay. So MLO now, so you see that reading boot sector. Okay, now it is saying that U boot dot bin from NAND flash. Then so see that here the MLO has been loaded. Okay, now it is loading U boot. Okay, MLO loads U boot, and then U boots basically, U boots is saying that this is the hardware property. It is printing some of the hardware properties. Okay, I2C is ready. DRAM is uh, 
256 mag nand flash is this much in and out serial are there board is board revision number okay so this is the u boot basically u boot program is reading displaying information about this board okay and then it is saying that now u boot the role of the u boot is load the u image but before that it says give you option that do you want to go into the u boot prompt okay if you want to go into the u boot prompt you press the any enter button or any key okay and then like i we talked about earlier so this is the print if i do the print env it shows lot of environment variable which has which can be set like which are right now is set okay so so you can you can see that right that boot arg is there so in boot arg boot arg is basically the command which boot arg is a environment variable and when u image load itself u image gets loaded so this is the boot arg as a pass as a argument that kernel should honor this 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 uh, basically this is the input to the kernel image that okay console is tty s2 you should use baud rate is uh, 115 like if you look at here so so it is saying that <coughs> the console is tty s2 baud rate is 115200 no flow control 8 bit and then it is saying that there is there is no init rd all these are linux specific terms which when you play around with the kernel you will come to know that there is a init rd image there is a, so those things <coughs> you will on the any linux box you go into the slash boot slash boot direct, directory and see there is there might be some grub related information so like you boot first time linux box so it says that which image you want to choose so that is basically loader your grub grub is a loader on linux generally all the flavors of linux right now uses uh, grub earlier it was lilo but so so this is so this is kind of those information you are passing to this micro image u image of the u image which is kernel basically linux android kernel so now i talked about that you can do set env set env and let's say like let's say that clicker okay and then we say that now if you feel do print env it will look at the last right at the at the end oops not this one this one right just now i saved one environment variable this is why this is how you can save any any environment variable like you can not, but right now it is not written on the nand flash okay so like the minute i reset the board it will all gone this clicker and clicker 1 2 3 is all gone so to save it what i do is that save env okay and so it is writing to nand done so it is written now on the hard drive itself like on the nand flash of the board so if i reset and now if i do print env it's there the and at the end you can see right but i have reset the board but it's still that variable which i set is still there now i want to delete this how how can i do that so then again we use just set env and uh, clicker and i will not give it any value so it will just delete that okay now if i do save env and so it's gone you can see at the end there's no clicker this thing right so 
yeah this and this variable root is basically uh, the u image uh, this image the kernel image is built with this root equal to this option okay so <coughs> so using this right kernel knows that from where when u image is booting up it knows that from where it has to pick up the root file system okay now and uh, just now you can also see that there is a boot command okay and there you see that you see that boot m and this is the address it is it has been given so this is address boot m is this one this address is from where the you will kernel when you start loading the kernel so u boot will load your image kernel image into the memory and then make cpu to jump on this particular address so once cpu jumps to that particular address the kernel will start booting up okay so if i just type and there are lot of other commands are there if you type just help it will show you this these many commands are there okay this is just in the u boot in u boot environment there are so many like what what we used is print env one of the command we uses this one right print env similarly there will be some save set env here you can see similarly like if you want to run some commands you can use run, run command as well so so this is this is basically all your u boot environment you use this but you have to be little bit careful and then I, if i want to boot the u image i just type boot now it is saying that <coughs> reading u image now i can't stop it so this is your kernel is booted now if you look at so till now here till this before this part before this line okay the kernel was booting by itself there's all kernel initialization but here it went to look for the root file system and it found that on this particular block this is android basically android terminology mm cblk 0p2 and it is saying that oh, there is root file system ext3 and its type is ext3 file system internal journal and recovery complete and everything it is saying and then so here you are and you can go to you can see that there are a lot of files are there your ls command is working your cd command is working so this is this is a general environment you get now if you so i told you right that using ins mod you can load a kernel module and using rm mod so this these commands are there in the this image now i don't have a driver so that i can load it but you can see that ins mod is saying that what is the uses you have to with ins mod you have to provide the module name and rm mod also you need a module at which module you want to do and ls mod is basically you can see that what all drivers has been loaded what all kernel modules are loaded but right now we have not loaded any one all the modules are basically all hardware drivers are built into the kernel itself so you will not see that is there any driver right now but you can write your own driver put it into the root file system and when you copy it into the root file system and when you plug it this card you can check on this way change directory to 
whatever wherever you have saved in the root file system and you will get it everything. So, is there any question or it is it looks okay. So, this is you can see that the normal Linux has been loaded using this SD card. I will show you that what, what this actually this SD card has because I cannot it is it is being used as a booting boot device like a normal hard disk which gets used as a boot device. Similarly, we are using here as a SD card as a boot device. Now, I will I will put that card I will I am taking out this card I, yeah. I will and then I will show you through Linux box that what, what exactly is there in the so you can see that now let us go to terminal, let us see. Again like D masses will tell you that any device has been added or not. So, you can check using D and here you can see that there is this device has been added and uh, it, it has been mounted as well. It has like kernel it find out that this particular device has a root files uh, like file system and it mounted all already. So, this is partition into two SDA SDB 1 and SDB 2. SDB 1 contains your uh, MLO, U boot and U image and uh, SDB 2 contains all the root file system. So, if you what all devices is mounted on your system use mount command and you can see that sdb2 is mounted okay so if we see the So, this is your root file system which is available on this card okay. and if, but it has another partition we will mount it. So, you can see that. So, <coughs> there is MLO and U boot dot bin and U image and there are another files boot dot SCR and normal dot SCR that that is <coughs> I am not basically on that side if you go on the beagle board side it will tell you that file that these many files you need to copy uh, MLO U boot. So, these these files are like gave you two sides so on beagle board side the google 
Bigel board site, if you go there, you will see that it is saying that you copy these files and it, it gives you the order as well. But you need to copy MLO, you need to copy then U-boot, then you need to copy uh, basically U-image, then it says that copy RAM disk, then it says that normal SCR and boot SCR. What does this boot SCR and normal SCR does? Probably I am not aware right now. <coughs> so, it is probably for the booting from the windows terminal, it requires probably this boot SCR and normal SCR, not sure. So, here U image, here you can replace your U image, you, you build your own kernel and replace this U image and uh, then you can load it on using this card. So, so and uh, if you So, first partition like, so the steps are that <coughs> you can, it is mentioned on the side, but I can just say so you, you have this card, you attach this card first is that like attach SD card to any Linux box where you have built your kernel like cross compiled kernel for Beagle, Beagle board then you the minute you attach this SD card it is going like Linux is going to show you that there is a device attached to this particular. So, you need to partition that partition create like let us assume that this is this is recognized as SDB. So, you create two partition SDB 1 and SDB 2. Here, this partition type is basically FAT, when FAT 32, and uh, this partition type is ext 3 fs. The commands to create partitions is F disk. Okay, and you can see the utility and its help. You can create using F disk. You can create partitions, and then and to create file system on a given partition, you can use MKFS. And now, if you want to use FAT, so you have to say MKFS V FAT and or MKFS dot ext three. So all file system has their, their, if you write a file system you have to provide a MKFS utility. So, that only that particular file system understand that what is the format of this file system. So, it creates this MKFS is a uh, generic tool and this VFAT says that okay, MKFS this is the MK you can create this particular VFAT FAT type file system using MKFS VFAT ext3 similarly you have ext2 or any other razor fs or any other file system is there there will be uh, same mkfs for that now the third step is that copy and first then you have to mount mount sdb1 and sdb2 fourth step is that fourth step would be that copy mlo u boot dot bin then u image then this is on sdb1 fifth step is that copy your root file root fs and sdb2 these these all steps are there on the site which i 
uh, which we have mentioned in the slide. Yeah, you will get a copy of slide. So, and uh, once it is done, then like this U image here, cross compiled image, and uh, if there is any, like if there is any K mod, then what I would do is that, okay, I will. So, so if you So, what here I am trying to do is that I am going to format this particular card and uh, will show you that from the very beginning like one of the steps now you have to do is that comp download this MLO and U boot create your own kernel and then after that how to burn like how to write it on to this, how to create a partition on this particular SD card and then how to run load it I am that, that part I am going to. I just copy it. I take it.
So, right now I am going to format this particular like. So, what command I use is I know that this particular device has been recognized as SDB. So, I am going to use fdisk utility to format it. So, I will just say that. Uh, so, if you want to see that how many partitions is there, so you can see that there is SDB 1 and uh, type ID is set to C and SDB 2 its type is set to 83. Basically, this is the type of the partition you specify saying 83 is generally used for your boot partition. So, like if you look at this column ID column. So, this is a is saying that SDB 1 is of partition is of ID is C. It means that it is uh, Windows uh, fat, fat partition and if you look at the 83, generally it is 83 is used as a boot partition like for root FS generally we use this uh, partition type. So, the command on F disk is P to list down all the partition, command is D to delete the partition. So, it asks that which partition you want to delete, you can specify. So, in uh, Linux you can create four primary partitions, Linux world you can create four primary partitions and each partition can be further uh, can be sub, sub uh, primary partitions can be created on each primary partitions. So, I have deleted partition 1, if you see it is just SDB 2 and then I am going to delete and so it automatically selects knowing that there is just one partition left it will select it and delete it and then I am going to write. So, that is safe. So, now if I do again I will see that there is no partition. Okay. So, this is how the first time your card will be recognized as just sim simple one device. Now, you want to create a partition. So, partition is n and you can. So, you can see there is a primary part primary partitions. It is saying that there is 0 primary partition, 0 extended partition and 4 free. 4 free means 4 primary 4 partition is still you can create and that is primary partition. So, I am going to create primary partition. You can name it default first sector. So, this partition is starts is saying that this partition is starts from the first sector. So, you will say then first partition size you can specify something like 64 mac and say then you create then you set the type of partition and here we we specify the id i was talking about that this partition type id is c okay so now it is saying that change system type of partition want to see this is v90 W95 FAT32. Then I am going to create another partition, and uh, this, will, this will again be a primary partition. I will this is the second partition, and I will uh, allocating all the space available to the second partition, and now I can list down. So, we have created two partitions SDB 1 and SDB 2 and now I am going to save this configuration. So, saved it. Now, now if we look at this. So, we have done step 1 and step 2. Now, we are going to perform a step 3, 4 and uh, 
before that we have to basically create uh, this So we have to create FAT and EXT3FS on these two partitions. So SDB1 will be used as a boot partition. We'll create you can see these many file systems, MKFS is there, BFS, CAMFS, EXT2, all. So I partitioned uh, SDB1 as a FAT file system and SDB2 as a EXT3 file system. Why we create file system? Because we want to have a view of files, and uh, like raw partitions are just simple space. You you store something, but you will not see it as a files. So you create a file system on that, and so you can have like recognize like organize your data in the files. So that is that is why file system is needed. Now we are going to mount. using SDB so that no discrepancies. See the mount. It is showing that SDB one is like yeah, SDB one is mounted on media SDB one new, and its type is uh, VFAT, and it is rewrite file system. <coughs> Similarly, it is saying for SDB two is on media SDB two new, and type is EXT three. So <coughs> now, so so we have done with the step two. The complete. Now we have attached the card, created partitions. Now we have create partition like, and then formatted the file system on those partitions. Now we have uh, this images uh, saved. So I have saved basically in this old this thing. So, we are going to copy basically.
Okay, first I will copy as MLO. Then I'm going to copy. It was ramdas or it was U image. So, I am going to show you that what happens if there is no root file system on the system, like if you do not copy the root file system, what will happen? So, like logically what should happen? MLO is there, it will load U boot, U boot is there, it will load kernel image, but kernel image will finally, when boot up, it will look for the file system and it may not find that. So, boot process may be stuck, may get stuck somewhere. I am powering up the board, Let's see what happens. So, you can see right that the so you can see that the boot bootloader has been it will not give us time lot, but you see this line right loading u boot, then it is reading uh, u image on. So, so no init found. So, basically the kernel got boot up, but it is not finding the file system, root file system. So, it will panic, it will kernel will, so you will not get the prompt here. So, this is why basically the root file system is uh, very important. From kernel point of view, your kernel is up and running, but root file system is not there. So, you any utility is not available for user. So, you cannot do anything. So,
So, we can see that SDB 2 is already mounted on this particular gate tray. So, where we are here, here. So, this was the boot root file system backup which I took. So, now we can copy into the mounted this one. This is correct copy. Right? Now, I am unmounting both the partitions which has which is like you can see that here S D B 2 is mounted on here, S D B 1 is mounted here. So, before pulling out this card, I need to unmount it. So, that if there is any data uh, lying in the uh, like on RAM, it will go to the card. <coughs> Now, we have copied the root file system here as well. So, uh, and I will check. So, you can see like that is the stop here. So, reading boot sector it is loading this u boot, then it is like now it is ready to load the u image. So, we will just start and load it is the kernel is booting. So, this time it is ok right, because it founds the root file system. You can see there is all contents here and uh, if you go to the this is this is the contents you can see that sqlite stmt general this file this was this is the backup file and uh, this is available on the board as well here similarly if you copy your modules in one of the directory, your module will be available over here. Okay. Like kernel module if you create an okay. thank you guys. So, this is the basic working of a hardware that is the beagle board. The idea behind uh, introduction of uh, Beagle Board and uh, why you use Beagle Board uh, is basically it supports Android like any other devices. Uh, you have the uh, Android devices, right? And uh, why why do we need to use Beagle Board? Uh, you can use Beagle Board for many, many things. For example, you can run it as a small computer, use it as a computing device. You can also design hardware based on Beagle Board where you can run industrial applications on Beagle Board. Can anybody suggest any such applications? You can of course uh, interface various peripherals uh, to the Beagle Board. You can use uh, interface a USB camera to it. You can use, uh, interface Wi-Fi modules, Bluetooth modules. You can use, you can control industrial control systems using Beagle Board as well. So, if you have a, a UI, for example, if you have a LCD connected, 
you have ports available for LCD connection as well and you can make it as a pad, your own pad device as well, is not it. So, basically it is nothing but an environment which is available to you for you to design various applications. In fact, if you are aware last time we discussed about uh, one basic application for uh, detecting malarial parasite in blood, right. Uh, were you people there that time? Okay, so I will just explain you what exactly uh, is the use case. Uh, in uh, deep villages in India, we do not have high end equipment which can easily detect malarial parasite in the blood quickly. So, what do you have to do it? You have to send it to the lab and uh, you have to uh, have certain processes done on that uh, serum sample and then use it or view it under a high power microscope. And when you uh, view it under high power microscope, you see certain uh, parasites and you have to actually count those parasites per cubic millimeter, is not it. So, that is such a difficult task and you need again trained eyes, you need a trained lab technician. But certain devices like this, you can quickly uh, write applications, you can quickly interface a camera to it, small camera and use the same techniques for processing. But instead of a lab person or a lab technician, you can easily do image processing and see because I uh, will tell you the process again. Uh, you take the blood sample, separate the serum, take the serum sample, treat it with a dye and then you drop that spot on a chromatography paper. Once you drop that drop of blood or serum on the chromatography paper, it starts migrating. All the proteins start migrating and they form different bands because of the dye they form different bands. So, you take a photograph of this band and start analysis. What you do is image processing and you know the thickness of the band. So, find out the thickness of the band and you see most concentrated side of the band. So, where you get maximum color correct. For example, if you have a red color, red color dye safranin right. So, if it if the parasite takes up the safranin, it will show you pink color or slightly reddish color. So, you analyze the band and then you say okay, there are basic calculations given in, given in the journals how to calculate this particular bandwidth. So, you calculate the band and say okay, this is the uh, say uh, 1000 uh, parasites per cubic centimeter or cubic milliliter, right. So, that is how that is how you actually use these devices. So, this is one use case basically, but n number of use cases can be derived from this particular application. So, this is this board supports Android and writing applications on Android becomes easier and most of the drivers are easily available to you. You can download the drivers, integrate it with your kernels, integrate it to your system and start using them. So, that is that is the main idea behind why we should use such hardware which is so cheap to you and easily available to you, correct. Yeah. So, thank you everybody for coming and uh, I hope you enjoyed this session.